Veterans Memorial for someone who got hit because somebody didn't see, somebody pulled out, didn't see a, a bike coming, didn't hear a bike. Uh, you know, guys get run off the road all the time. I got a friend right now, it's over in Tampa General right now, that a car forced him into a guardrail. I've had problems where I saw somebody stare me right in the eye. They tried to run, run me right over. Uh, lady and gentleman was actually arguing while he was driving, wasn't paying attention, and made a U-turn without looking at him. Ran me right off the road. My name is Lana Lang. I'm Director of Safety Education with A-Beta Florida. A-Beta Florida has a um, motorcycle safety and awareness program that we present to high school students and any organization that would like to know how a motorcyclist rides and the reaction to the, what's on the highway. The reason that we've done this is that we want to read, A-Bay wants to reduce motorcycle injuries and fatalities on the Florida highways and byways. Well, they just need to be more aware that the bikes are there. The bikes can do some things too, like put enough lights on their bikes so they can be seen, uh, wear bright clothes. Uh, but the people that are driving, they just, they just need to pay attention to what's around them, what is their surroundings. Again, look twice. People do misjudge the size of a vehicle and making left-hand turns. They figure a smaller vehicle, motorcycle, quick turn. Big semi-truck, second thought, no turn. A, uh, a tanker truck made a left-hand turn in front of the guy, and the guy hit the truck and was killed. Uh, you know, guys get run off the road all the time. I got a friend right now, it's over in Tampa General right now, that a car forced him into a guardrail. And him and his girlfriend was hurt real bad, and she's in one hospital and he's in another right now. So what we want is the same respect that you give a semi-truck, tractor-trailer, as a motorcyclist, you know, to have the same respect on the highway. Um, a lot of people have a bias towards motorcyclists where uh, they don't like them. Uh, heck, my own mom used to tell me, I hate those things, they're just too loud. Well, now that I'm a little older, it's yeah, mom, <laughs> they're loud because we don't want to get hit. But uh, there's just, everywhere you go, whether it's Florida, uh, to, to New York, to California, there's motorcycle accidents. It's a way of life, and, and they are. They're tougher to see. Blind spots, heck, I could be driving and have a Cadillac in my blind spot, driving my big old Hummer and not see them, let alone the size of a motorcycle. It's, it's very difficult to see a motorcycle sometimes. We can fix what people say they don't know by doing our program. It was about maybe 12.45, maybe, maybe even closer when they left here. The guys got in their cars. There was, um, there were three, two or three separate cars, and then Taylor got on his motorcycle. They were all going to ride over to the community pool at um, Metro West, and they said, "You know, we'll see you back here in a little while, Dad." And I told them that dinner would be ready. It was a Sunday, uh, it was June the 11th, and it was mid afternoon. I was, uh, I woke up. Uh, a bunch of my friends spent the night. We were all just goofing around watching a movie, and. Um, we woke up uh, around maybe 11 o'clock, got up, made breakfast for everyone, and we all decided to go to the pool. So um, we all hopped in our car, and I got on my motorcycle, and we headed down towards uh, the pool area. Um, and I think uh, once I got up towards, I took a left onto Hiawassee, and that's all I can remember after that. Uh, doctors call it, I have selective amnesia from the accident. It was about maybe 35 minutes later, Erica, one of the little girls, one of his friends, came in the front door and she had a really strange look on her face and she said, Mr. Blackwell, you have to come with me, there's been an accident. And just the look on her face let me know right away that something was really very, very bad. I got to the hospital and one of his friends was there and he told me that uh, they had to get Taylor out of there right away because they, the accident actually ripped his arm off. This lady drove into his motorcycle. Um, apparently the two ladies that were in the vehicle were talking to each other and they saw her drive right into his motorcycle and just cause him to start flipping. The handlebars actually caught his arm, I guess, and pinned it to the gas tank. And when, when it flipped over, it hit a fence that goes over uh, the turnpike. And the bike rode the top of the fence and just and kept going and ended up about 30 feet to the southwest of where he landed. 
and he just fell down. His arm had been ripped off at the shoulder. And Eddie, one of the guys, one of his friends that was there said that he was shooting a stream of blood out of his shoulder like this, the size of your finger. I lost my right arm in the accident. It was ripped off during the accident. And I believe the lady ran over my left leg and severely crushed it. Later on, they had to amputate it above the knee. So all I have now is a prosthetic leg to my left. Messing my arm here. Uh, of course I had a tattoo, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and then half of it's gone now. Um, missed that, I got a couple things on the back. On the right hand side, what they tried to do was they took out my lap, lap muscle and put some muscle up here. And they took out a couple of pieces of skin to try to um, to do a skin graft over here on the right hand side. What you see on this side right here was is that they took out an entire my entire um, lap muscle and tried to save my leg, but they couldn't do it. So they tried it one more time and it still didn't take. So that whole big area right there is where my lap muscle used to be. The, um the doctors there, I found out later, there were 21 people working on him. That was a combination of doctors and nurses and everything. But um, the whole the whole idea of, uh, of what they were doing was is not to try to reattach the arm, but to save his life because he had lost so much blood that he was near death. They let us come in, and his head was so swollen. He was every color of the rainbow. You know how when you get a really bad, bad bruise, it's blue? It's red, it's black, and then there's some yellow in it too. Well, that's what he looked like. He, he looked like a pumpkin, and his body his, had swollen. He looked like he weighed 250 pounds or more. He said that had he not been wearing that helmet that's over there, that he, without, without a doubt, would be, would be dead. I bought this helmet right when I bought my bike. Uh, it was $450, but you can't put a price on your life. Um, the helmet right here was an Icon helmet. Uh, it was the top of the line that they had, and I liked it because it had cool graphics. But um, you can see right here, there's a big, huge dent. Uh, I was wearing my helmet during my accident, and if I didn't, I would be completely dead. There, there was no way I would have saved my life at all. Um, there was a pole, I ran into a pole, and the pole came up, and that was the first uh, impact I had right here. Then it slid off my head, um, and I believe there's another part on the other side where I actually hit the, uh, where I hit the pavement, and it took off the, uh, the visor as well. Um, I mean, helmet saved my life. Everyone that has a bike should wear a helmet. I don't care if it's a helmet wall or not. You should wear your helmet. I mean, save my life, it could save yours. Um, we went back. I took some pictures of the uh, of the place where this happened. The road was pretty much straight. The grade couldn't be more than maybe three to five percent. If you were to look at flat level, um, there was no reason for anybody to be changing lanes. Um, you know, it was just two people that were busy talking to each other and not paying attention that drove into this guy. There were witnesses that saw the whole thing that that watched her just, they were yak yakking and just drifted right over into my son. And now he's got, you know, he's missing his right arm and they amputated his left leg. So it's, it's changed his life tremendously. Um, so it, it can happen to the best of us. They see him, I think they're just being negligent that they think the road's theirs and because they're bigger, they're gonna take us because you just gotta look out. Look and listen. Watch out. Just look twice. You look one's cool. You know what? You don't see one, look again to make sure. A lot of my friends have died on bikes because they got hit by a car. Unfortunately, one of those risks that, uh, that uh, you have to take if you want to ride a bike. So, be aware. Look twice before you turn. Well, people gotta understand they gotta share the road. The road's not just there. They have to share the road with the motorcycle. They have to look around. Look twice. Save a life. Yeah.